Hey, Marie. Oh, oh, hey, Marie. Hey, good morning. Good to see hey. you. Hey, we're making it finally. This <laughs> meeting was was very hard to accomplish. Okay, for, uh, calendar invites for some reason. It's crazy. It just Google hates me. That's it. <laughs> I have too many meetings. They've decided you're a threat. Yeah. True. <laughs> well, thanks. Thanks a lot for jumping in today. And the context of, of this conversation is basically we still haven't that opportunity was the Gitma editorial. Uh, since then, I've uh, went uh, kind of crazy and, and wrote that paper, uh, oh, wow. which has been <laughs> yeah, thanks. Um, being uh, reviewed uh, through this blind review thing for for the conference, and uh, yeah, still no feedback. But I'm pretty sure it's going to be destroyed by whoever is reviewing it because that's my first paper. <laughs> but let's try and and uh, write up that editorial piece, which I don't think will be much about like science, but more about our workshop, what we delivered, and kind of like the general direction. No, that's great. And just to say also that, that I really enjoy the, the, the flow, the, the, the structure of the paper you've done. And if you like, I'm happy to, to give like a brush over. I haven't had a chance to do that until now. But going through it, I'm getting lots of ideas. And I really like you've given it a strong backbone on, on which to, to tinker. So yeah, it's, it's great. I would appreciate that. Um, yeah. Um, and as far as the editorial goes, um, it feels like, you know, somewhere between where we went in our talk and sort of the approach that you take in the paper of actually you know, starting to cite some things and giving people a little bit of uh, meat that they can go sink their teeth into um, feels like it's probably a good, uh, a good approach. I mean, and I know it's an editorial, so it's less, we're trying to be a little bit less heavy on the technical detail, um, but, but it seems to me like somewhere in between those two is probably a nice place to land for the editorial. Where, where are you two kind of aiming or what are your thoughts as far as where, where we might want to focus on that goes? Yeah, so I think uh, we need some structure uh, for, for this one. So basically maybe like an introduction, which is um, a little bit less scientific, but more like exciting because it's, yeah. uh, you know, more of a, an easy read uh, than uh, kind of like reference points to um, to the, the fact that, you know, Corona Y is experiencing this and still is experiencing it or something like that. And maybe then a part on like external references in, in the more life, like lifestyle way. I mean, not like lifestyle, but not like science, science, right? Uh, something like that. Yeah, what that sounds think, great. Marie. Yep. No, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. Um, <clears throat> So you said that we wanted to reference the um, workshop that we did. Is that is I that think right? So. Kind of thinking. Yeah. And and one one piece that that um, oh I lost it there. Sorry, <laughs> I'm still in wake up mode. No problem. I'll regather my thought. Yeah, because um, the thing about the workshop is we did not have a lot of outside attendees, and we didn't have a lot of people actually doing the exercises and stuff. And so um, I don't know that there's a lot of substance there to, uh, to talk about what happened. Oh, I didn't mean to talk about like how we actually applied things on the workshop, right. more on the fact that, hey, we did this workshop and here are the things that we covered and sure. okay. kind of like uh, referencing more to the workshop versus more what I did on the paper, which is like, you know, structure, this is the experiment, this is what we've done, and, and more in a, in a free form, like free flow way. That makes a lot of sense to me. Mm -hmm. I also noticed that you started referencing it as open management, mm -hmm. uh, which sounded good. I like that. Yeah, the reason why is because I think we had that discussion somewhere in, in Slack channel, and people started kind of getting a little bit edgy about uh, like on management or something. And then uh, someone uh, should out actually a link to open management something. And I was like, oh, wow, this is exactly it. And like open source, open management, I, I think that that feels uh, good. And also there is this guy that already wrote a book about uh, on management, which is. Oh, uh, yeah. okay. 
kind of like uh, another point not to say that there is competition or there can be but it's just um another yeah. yeah no that makes sense I, and i i'm still keen to see if we can find something that feels like it's a fit and isn't something that already exists because i think the open management thing we we were looking at is on track but i think that there's a bunch of things that really are innovations um and that yeah. if we're able to capture that um, it'll both be useful um, like to others, but it'll also be useful from a practical standpoint in terms of differentiating what it is that we're doing. So, so I feel like we're still, we, we may still be on the look for the perfect okay, term. Okay, got it. Gonna, yeah. yeah. I agree. Um, oh yeah, so th this is just, a, it's a brief zoom out and then, and then hopping back in. But one thing that I think is interesting in looking at your paper, Arthur, um, something that, that I'm realizing is that Part of what it is is here's the specific things we've identified that work, but another piece of it is that um, this as one instance of, of whatever it is that we're doing, um, any given instance is going to sort of be alloyed with, it's sort of, it's sort of like the chemical composition of a given diamond. Right. It's, going to be, it's going to be alloyed with the experiences and expertise that the people who bring to it are. And I think that that'll be an interesting angle to explore of saying like, here's the specific skill sets and experience that this group was coalescing around and so here's the shape it took and just to really help people get that what we're outlining isn't um and we already do talk about that like it isn't the handbook on how you know follow these steps and it'll work um right. it's a successful trace through of a process that's been effective um and so i think that'll be, be interesting at least to see how we talk about that yeah, I like that. Kind of like emphasizing the, on the subjective flavor of uh, the application. Yeah. What, what, what feels like they're the key things that we want people to, after reading the editorial, take away? Uh, and, and by that, both in terms of how do we want them to be thinking of what it is that we're doing? How would we ideally want them to then be engaging further with finding out more about it? Um, Great question. I think yeah. there are a couple of objectives here and we can brainstorm those through the prism of our kind of like uh, personal goals because obviously, you know, we're here because we want to accomplish something and uh, there might be a couple of directions. So the first one, obviously getting people excited and kind of propagating this uh, in innovation of the, the management structures and the processes, but that's kind of like, uh, kind of like the philanthropic uh, portion of it. Then another portion is tailoring to that uh, request that uh, I forgot the name of the organizer, but he basically was inquiring like, so is there a service? Is there something? to kind of utilize this or someone, can someone help my organization or any right. other organization make this happen? And this is a potential kind of like, um, you know, maybe commercial, maybe like a nonprofit slash commercial or something angle that we can explore in terms of creating that, um, I don't know, team, like consulting team that can jump into environment and kind of build the, the foundation to, to experiment on these things. And obviously it's not like we've done this hundred times. And uh, Marie, you're, you already run some form of consulting for that. So maybe you have yeah. more experience with that. Uh, but you know, I personally haven't done much of that. So that's another angle to explore. And I would love to, to hear your thoughts. Yeah, no, I think, I think that makes sense. Um... I think this is an emerging field, right? And so uh, the, my, the work that I have done has been in the education area, not so much um, in, my practical experience is in, in, in uh, corporate, but I haven't gone out to corporate organizations to do consulting. My consulting has been in the education area. And I think that'll be neat in terms of writing the paper to look at where those different pieces are. And I think especially with you, Arthur, coming from that, that um, sort of VC entrepreneurial AI side, and Marie, you coming from that um, management facilitative piece within that corporate and educational side. Mm -hmm. um, and then for me, um, coming from a mixture of sort of a bit of the entrepreneurial side, and then primarily it's more like community-based governance Mm -hmm. um, and, and management side. Um, from, and from what you both have said, what, what do you think about this? It sounds like maybe 
um, an, an ideal if people were to finish reading the reading the piece would be for them to get a sense of like there's a whole new way of doing things and here is a little bit of the flavor of it like here's here's what it involves and the stuff that is going to be probably most surprising about what that looks like and it really is effective um, and that it's highly custom. It is closer to a pattern language than a blueprint in that how it gets applied is going to be absolutely unique in each situation. And then that we are um, actively interested in and pursuing um, you know, uh, opportunities and looking at the ways that we can help other organizations learn how to apply that in their unique situation. And that sort of covers both of those grounds. I like that. Awesome. And I think that, that that is basically a call to action, right? Yep. Uh, for example, we can create a destination and people can basically schedule a call with us, you know, yep. if they want to explore it, if this is something interesting to them. And that way we can kind of like, you know, prototype this process and, and see if there's something in there. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. Cool. So maybe let's create a Google Doc um, and just start throwing things uh, as we did. In, in the Gitmo workshop and, and see what, what comes out of it. I also, if you don't mind, I just, this is a slight distraction, but I want to, to sort in because this might be the right set of people. Um, so I, I was talking a little bit with um, UNDP about what's going on in Beirut and Lebanon um, and suggesting that Corona Y might have some things that would be useful to offer there. And it, it sounds like from, in terms of like, supply chains and logistical support and all of that, they've got that side pretty well covered. Um, certainly the, the, what I'm hearing strongly is that a lot of the, the main issue that's there is, is, is the corruption, um, but that in terms of what anything might be that could be offered, exactly what we're talking about might be a piece of what that is, of how, do, how can you actually organize people on the ground um, around fuzzy but distinct goals. Yeah. Um, and anyways, I just wanted to see if you all were interested in joining on a call with a couple of folks from UNDP yeah. that, and we haven't promised anything. It's more, um, this would be a call to suss out whether it feels like there's a match between what we're doing and what their needs are with the understanding is that there's a good chance that there isn't, but, uh, but next Monday is that call. So, so we can, we can figure out a time if you two are interested in, in doing that. Let's do it. Uh, um, what times work for you guys? I know they said that they wanted it to be after 4 PM Beirut time. So, um, that would be uh, any time after about six in the morning for us. So if we wanted to do it at probably, you know, eight or nine, my hunch is that would be fine for them. Okay, so I cannot do eight on Monday. I can do, uh, can you guys do 7 a.m. Pacific? Yep, that would work for me. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, great. So I'll send an, I'll send an invite to, to each of you and maybe I'll get a little blurb from each of you about what we want to sort of say about who we are. And yeah, I love your idea about let's let's make an open document where we can just start sort of slamming some of the different pieces of what this might be. I don't know if you want to experiment with it in terms of making our diagrams for the pieces we might put there. I'm starting to use Miro a lot more yeah. as a collaborative place to sort of show flow and how things might go, and that might be a thing too uh, that we can we can tinker with. Yeah, let's yeah, create one. Uh, sorry, Marie. I said I haven't used that. Basically, it's 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 good for doing. Um, uh, What's sort of looking for not brainstorming uh, mind mapping um, but it has a lot of you can you can be making diagrams you can add sticky notes everyone can use it at the same time like google docs you can add links to different things or video or, or different pieces so it it might be something beyond this paper um, that we want to have as just a general conceptual brain board that we can then look at and carve out and say like here's a good paper that we could write for this audience that sounds good. It's like infinite yeah. whiteboard, and we we've actually started adopting it for different parts of Corona Y. So, f for example, this one is um, just an example of how we're looking through the financial viability of Corona Y. Okay. So, right. mapping out the capital, donors, governmental uh, relationships, and the projects, just like sticky notes and all other things. So, very cool. Awesome. One other piece that, uh, well, actually, what else do, do we want to cover about the the paper in terms of our next steps or organizing around that? I don't want to distract before we've gotten I that think all there's, locked there's, in. Uh, there's one thing, uh, we, you guys were talking earlier about how uh, it's not a blueprint. 
one of the things that I experienced with education is that when they got a number of educators together to create a process, that worked really beautifully. And then when they tried to have other people recreate, use their process, it doesn't work because they weren't involved in creating it. And yeah. so I think that that is one of the things that we want to have as a, as a, as a takeaway. I, I love that. And that seems like it's key is that it's, it's much less about do it this way and more about get your group together and exactly. here's a way to get started in figuring out how your group's going to do it. That's great. Yeah. And I think one of the things we want to talk about is tools that you guys have used and tools that yet need to be created. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of tools. <laughs> right. I think, but I think that's a good thing to talk about is what are the tools that would make this doable, right? Right. That you're currently doing with too much manpower. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I like that, that also that piece of, and again, it's sort of how each group will be a different alloy, having the, having the palette of what the different tools are. Mm -hmm. um, is useful to say, here's the ones that we've found extremely useful. And right. then here, here's the ones that we're identifying would be great to have. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that for any given uh, instance of this getting used, it's going to be probably some combination of these plus whatever else is, is, is necessary for people. And it's also fine in an editorial, uh, like jumping to the editorial piece to say like, here's, a, here's an example. Here's a few of the things that have been a piece of that. And that part of what we're working on is identifying this, this catalog of some of the tools that are most useful for this but we don't have to try to outline what all of that is because what we want is people to leave excited and wanting to give us a call to find out more about what exactly. it is we're doing yeah yeah oh, great i agree so i just created a channel on slack invited you to and okay. i just sent the uh i just created a google doc um so yeah just filling in we're going to need introduction, uh, kind of like the um, detailed over, uh, not like what, what are the, the editorial like headers? I know they, they uh, sent us some, something. Oh, I don't remember. Daniel, do you have that um, editorial I'll to, example? I'll have to, yeah, we can find the example that they sent. Um, I think we want to start with an executive overview that is the exciting part and then go into an introduction that is, you know, here's, here's, here's basically what happened. And then go into what is the implication of this for modern management, not just uh, flat management. Yeah, like the areas, the industries, you know, even like civil and all the, the other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, structure. Just found this one. So yeah, like increasing importance, uh, theory and practice, um, typology of change, transformation framework. Um, yeah, so kind of like getting some like tables, I think would be good. Transformation design, global impact. I just got some, this is my, my colleague is, is yelling in the background. Okay. I, so I just got something because I hadn't realized I had gotten, um, and I'll have to make sure that it's not a spam, give us money and we'll publish your thing thing. But I've just gotten a thing for someone saying that they saw our paper and are interested in publishing it in the Journal of Business and Economics. Wait, what? Um, so this is from somebody. We, we learned of your paper, Corona Y, on managing flat decentralized communities for COVID-19 data science um, at the Gitma conference, and that they're interested in it and want to publish it in the Journal of Business and Economics. So I'll forward that to both of you so that that's we can awesome. look over that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Not a scam. <laughs> and, 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 and it's funny, because again, that's coming you know, right, right while we're looking at this. Yeah, that's um, some quantum entanglement. Definitely. <laughs> and it's, it's coming from a thing Called academic star so I want to make sure that that, that it, my scam flags are going up a little bit but, uh, but we'll we'll figure it out awesome all right I think we're good actually let's let's kick it off and I mean aiming to to produce something I don't know in like two weeks that sounds good reasonable yeah um one other kind of random research angle that I'm going to be checking out um but that I thought I would throw throw your way in case it's of interest for either of you. Um, so I've been thinking a lot about the basics of what we're doing is it's, a, it's about a, a nonlinear and a very kind of chaos friendly approach to governance. 
um, and we're describing this very new, and I realized um, there's, a, there's a historian, I think slash archeologist, Ron Eglash, uh, who's a professor who has studied a lot of stuff around the use of fractals within African architecture and uh, art and culture. Um, and I know that there's some other really interesting stuff about certain cultures using games, which only the elders in the community play, which really teach about nonlinear dynamics. Um, and I think it would be really interesting to see if we can find out anything about the governance and management principles involved in older societies, which had a clear understanding of, of, of nonlinear approaches to things. So if y'all are interested, I can, I can let you know what the results of that sort of dive is. Uh, and if you aren't, I won't be offended because it's fairly arcane. <laughs> no, I but mean, that, that, it sounds interesting. interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right, perfect. All right, well, we can, we can get cracking on the, uh, on the document. I'll send over the thing that, uh, that I got. And uh, I think I still, still maybe have a free Miro board. If I don't, then maybe one of us can set up a Miro board for this and, uh, and invite us all to it. Yeah, I actually have five boards. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I bought one, so. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, let's reconnect in Slack and start uh, working on a document. And yeah, super excited to, to reconnect on this. Me too. Sounds awesome. good. Great. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.